Well, it is certainly material to my business because somebody has to pay all the claims that are being produced. Uh, but let's look at it from a broader perspective. Uh, the Gilets Jaunes is a clear phenomenon of a social tension, of a social fracture in France. And um, it needs to be taken very seriously. And uh, we need to think, why is this happening? And why is it happening is because the social contract uh, where the Europeans have been very popular for doesn't work anymore. And secondly, we are not enough in dialogue uh, with the citizens. And I think this is a very important uh, message for all of us in Europe. Let's go back to dialogue, let's change our methods, and let's work on a new social contract so that we have a better inclusion going forward. What does that look like, though? I mean, uh, we, we, we've been talking about this for the last 10 years since the global financial crisis. And what have we got? We've got protesters on the streets. Yeah, but the question is, have we, always, have we ever asked why do we have protests? We always go and defend ourselves that this is an abnormal phenomenon. I think we need to go into a way and talk to Thomas, these people. you are a smart man. We've been around the block a few times as well. We don't need to go and ask these people. It's, as the great Mr Clinton once said, it's the economy, stupid. We all know that this isn't about migration. This isn't about sovereignty. It's about people's health care, their pensions exactly. and their economic yeah, situation exactly. as well. It ain't rocket science as far as I can see. People feel that they've missed out across Europe as well. And their answer is to fragment the European political system. And we're going to see that in spades come May as well with the parliamentary elections. Why don't politicians get it? Why doesn't the Davos man get it as well? Too much to too few and not enough people benefiting. Yeah, I think because we are, we are scared about this because it's a new phenomenon. And I personally would go exactly the other way and say, look, what's in it for us to make Europe uh, alive again? Because we have been living in peace for a very, very long time now. And 100 years ago, we were still at war. What has been achieved in Europe is phenomenal. So people forgot what the Treaty of Rome was all about. And yes. Too many British people yeah. perhaps are looking at uh, the yeah. economic implications of what uh, rights they've lost. They've I mean, of course we're going to forget what the Treaty of Rome was about. It was two generations ago. Yeah, but if you are, speak to young people today, mm. they say, look, peace, security, that's something given. I, I don't need to fight for this, but mm. we need to fight for it again because it's not a given anymore. Which brings me to the point is you think people aren't paying enough attention to the Europe-Russia threat. Yes, definitely. And uh, we are very much looking at the US and China. This is all what we are looking for. We are missing, I think, uh, the boom in the emerging markets where you have a very positive energy. We are not focusing ourselves enough on Europe and say, look, what is our future model? What is our own vision for our own continent? How can we establish a third model that is different to the US and different to China based on our values, based on the norms that we have, and also based on some focus areas where we are very strong? climate, social contract, the digital revolution. We mustn't copy Google or Facebook. We need to strengthen our own uh, strengths, which is very much in transport, aviation, and we need to think, how can we finance innovation? What is our soft bank of Europe? Mm. And that answer is not there today, but it could be found.